you guys about Blaze and Odo today. So let's just jump right in. Uh, so Blaze, what is Blaze? It's an interface for data-centric computation. It sounds really generic. Uh, we're going to dig into some details a little bit here. It consists of two components. Uh, an expression system that lets you uh, write lazily evaluated expressions and a bunch of like tiny little compute recipes that um, Blaze uses to execute expressions against uh, a particular data source like a data frame or a SQL database. So how does it fit into the rest of, uh, of the PyData ecosystem? A lot of systems like NumPy and Pandas have two layers. They have a, a user facing uh, an interface, and they have some low level code that implements uh, their algorithms. NumPy has you know, multi-array.c, and Pandas has a bunch of uh, Cython files. So the blue is the high level interface, and the white is the uh, low level fast code. And you, you see this approach in many, many different systems. SQL has things like Impala, MySQL, SQLite, and so forth. The whole NoSQL uh, ecosystem, numeric computing has a, a bunch of stuff. And then it's Hadoop and Spark. Blaze is just an interface. It doesn't implement any low-level fast code. It tells other systems what to do. Blaze is not the first of its kind. There are a couple of systems and libraries that do things similar to Blaze. Uh, there's a, there's some, a nice feature of Postgres, which is called foreign data wrappers, and it lets you do things like query a raw CSV file uh, with SQL. R is at dplyr for a year and a half or so, and it lets you, it lets you sort of write syntax that uh, lets you pipe um, sort of SQL-like operation. So you select you know, the A and B column from your data frame, you send that to group by, you're grouping on B, and then you're taking the average uh, by B over A. So let's dig into a little bit more details about each component. Expressions, Ex uh, expressions say, or they, they say, what do I want to compute? And they consist of things like a uh, name, a shape, and type information. So in this case, I'm making a uh, one million row table with two columns. Uh, name is a string column, and amount is a, a float64 column. And I'm calling it T. You can build up things on these expressions, and nothing is actually happening except you're tracking the type of type and name of, of operations and operations on columns. So you can sort of, you can build up a group by, you can do a join. We have things like arithmetic, date, and other, you know, standard arithmetic, reductions. Uh, we take a lot of API from pandas and things like column and row stacking expressions and a few others like is in and some more, some more. So that's, uh, that's expressions. There's compute, now uh, there's compute recipes. So this says, how do I take my expression and tell you know, Spark to do, to compute this expression? And we basically write down a bunch of little compute recipes that dispatch on the type of the expression and the, and the argument types. So in this case, I'm doing, I have like two join recipes so in one case, I'm, I have two data frames, I want to join them, I call pandas merge. Um, and then I have a Spark data frame, how do I do a join on that? Well, Spark data frames have a join method. And so, so Blaze knows when it's executing, when you call compute, like, hey, I have a join expression and I have a couple of tables in scope and their data frames, I need to call this implementation of join. It works with Many, many uh, libraries that are already in the eco ecosystem, like Python lists, a list of tuples, uh, NumPy arrays, record arrays, standard ND arrays, data frames, Spark data frames, SQL Alchemy table objects, H5Py data sets, PyMongo, I mean, like sort of 
Anything that has something that has queryable data, you could probably make that work in Blaze. That doesn't mean we're gonna maintain it for you though, so. All right, so let's see a demo. Okay, so I'm gonna import this thing from Blaze called data, which is a function that generates something that sort of combines symbols and uh, compute recipes. And the way I sort of uh, construct things is with this big ugly URI, but that this is just, uh, I'm, I'm connecting to a Redshift database here. Redshift is a column store uh, built by Amazon. And it, uh, it, uh, it uses uh, Postgres to generate, to uh, run SQL against that data. Okay, so dev is a database actually, so I can, I can sort of like use Blaze to explore uh, my data. Let me move this thing over so you guys can see what's going on here. And sort of use Blaze to explore my data. So if I look at, if I look at uh, d.fields, these are the tables that I have in my database. So I can do d.trip, and that, you're only seeing two columns there, but there are actually quite a few columns. It basically uses pandas to output data. And this is actually sending a, a SQL query to Redshift through SQL Alchemy, which is then using the DB API to bring back essentially a list of tuples, which we then throw into a data frame and wrapper. So you can actually look at the, um, the generated SQL by saying compute, and, and the way to do that, the way to get the compute is just from blaze import compute. So that compute d.trip.head. Uh, you actually have to say print. Okay, it's kind of ugly, but it's a big select statement with a limit clause on the end. Um, you can do things like a group by. I can say, so what do we have in our, in our trip data set? Oh, by the way, this is the New York City taxi trip data set. Uh, it's combining the fare and the uh, trip uh, data. So we can say, what's the average trip amount, or the average tip by uh, passenger count? Okay, so the way we would do that is we would say d.trip.passengerCount, uh, average tip, we'd say d.trip.tip uh, amount, Going off the edge here. Uh, tip amount dot mean. All right. Let's do that again. Trip dot passenger count. Average tip. D dot trip dot tip amount dot mean. Oh, that's not good. Let's look at what the uh, SQL of this thing is gonna look like. Okay, so I select trip passenger count, I take the average trip amount as, and I named it average tip, and I'm grouping by passenger count. So I didn't actually do any computation yet, I sort of just built up a SQL alchemy expression. If I actually wrapper it, then it will do the computation. Redshift is pretty quick, so we should have results all right, this is like 173 million rows or something like that. Um, so, and you, you're, you're sort of, get, you're getting back an, an expression. It's just that when you actually take a look at it, it does a computation. Okay, let's go back here. So that's, uh, that's, that's sort of like a, a, a simple demo of how you, how you might do stuff with Blaze. So SQL Alchemy is a fun library uh, because it wraps every single thing in, a, in like a proxy object. So if I wanna actually like get out a, a, a not a blaze expression, like a concrete thing, I would say compute this thing, that gives me a SQL Alchemy uh, selectable, I think. You'd say execute, and then you would say, that's gonna do the computation again.
So let's look at the type results. It's a result proxy. Now, let's say, so I want to get maybe like a list of stuff back. Uh, so we'd say results dot fetch all. That gives me back a list of tuples, right? Mm, no, gives you back this, a row proxy. So I don't really want row proxies. I would just want to get back like a data frame or something like that. This is kind of what SQL Alchemy feels like. Um, so the, the sort of like, how do I move between all these backends? It, you know, they all have different constructors. I want to dump my SQL Alchemy proxy, proxy of row proxies into a, a pandas data frame. So Odo is a library that does this. I'm going to skip over a couple of things. So I don't have a whole lot of time left. Um, but uh, yeah, so Odo is a library that does this. It's a library for turning things into other things. It was sort of removed from Blaze because it's sort of, it's useful on its own. And a lot of people used to say, "Oh, Blaze, it's a set of converters." Uh, it's not really a set of converters, and you know, so is LLVM. Um, but Odo actually is a set of converters. It's got a lot of different kind of converters. You can go from list to tuples. You can go from Hive CSV to a Hive Parquet file. It's sort of like CP with types, uh, centered around data and ta tables and tabular data. So it, uh, it, it allows you to go from X to Y in the most efficient way without explicitly writing down. So how do we do this? For example, I want to stick a data frame on a Hive cluster. Well, I know how to do this, data frame to CSV, call to CSV. Okay, that's pretty easy. I know how to load a CSV into Hive. Odo connects the dots for you, literally. Each type is a vertex in a graph, and there's an e each edge in this graph is a function that converts uh, one type to another type. And it sort of does it with one uniform API. So that's something more involved. Maybe I'll skip this. Um, let's see. Um, so each step of, of the conversion process is usually sort of very easy, right? I, I know how to go from data frame to CSV, CSV to Hive. Those are fairly simple steps. But I want to actually like sort of join those things together without explicitly writing that down. But sort of the whole thing, you may have a chain of like, you know, five conversions that you need to do. Um, so how does it work? There's a network of conversions. Kind of looks like this. This is the subgraph of data frame to all the other stuff, um, all the direct links between data frame and other types. And this is the whole graph. Uh, it's kind of big. It's probably bigger now. This is uh, a couple months old. Um, I don't, not totally sure what this little lone thing at the bottom right is. It's not connected to anything, so that's weird. Um, you can you can make your own. Like you don't have to contact the Odo library developers to say, hey, I need you know to convert from data frame to Spark data frame. You can kind of just do it. You have decorators and give it the types, and you that function does the conversion. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can condensate it. There's the docs. There's the source. And happy to take questions about uh, either Blaze or Odo. Yes. In, in what? In well, as in you do an entire chain per item so that you don't build the incomplete data structures all in memory as you're going. Um, no, they're, de they're definitely materialized as you go through the chain uh, because some, some backends only know how to deal with a particular type. So I may need to go to a data frame from a Python list of tuples. Yeah, sorry. 
That's right. Yeah, sure. So he asks, if there are multiple paths, how do you pick which one? And there's a cost associated with each. Um, yeah, right. So it's the convert uh, decorator has an optional cost parameter. And it's sort of a, a unitless number that you um, that's added as an edge weight to the graph. And we are using network X to compute the shortest path. So yeah, any other, any other questions? Yes. Um, depends on what the back end is. So if you, if you're, if you're in a, a source that's already in memory, like say you're in H5 Pi and you want to go to some, another thing that's out of core, like a CSV file, Odo will try and stay out of core and so it will do chunking. But if you, if you try to like just bring in something that won't fit into memory from something that is on disk, uh, it doesn't try to do anything, anything fancy there. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways to do that. We haven't really fleshed that particular thing out. In fact, that would probably be really, really slow because there's, it's gonna bring everything in as like a SQL Alchemy row iterator proxy something or other, and then that's gonna send that thing to the another DB API, which is gonna have to serialize all those Python objects. In fact, it might be better to just shove it to a CSV and then load it back into the other database. Um, yeah. Any, any more questions? Yes. Yeah, so there's a couple of things that PySpark has that Blaze doesn't have. Blaze has only a, sort of a top level expression. It doesn't have any kind of task scheduling abilities. Uh, so it doesn't really, it also doesn't really know anything about uh, how you would distribute the computation. Um, and so in that sense, it's, it's, more ab it's m sort of more abstract in the sense that you only have expressions and Spark has like an expression and then sort of that expression has like a way of implementing that, or way of computing that across a cluster. Um, so one thing that we do is um, like reducing a, a, the number of columns that you select out of a data set if, if uh, you're only selecting a few columns. We call that. Yep. Yep. So we compute like basically the entire set of columns that you're, that you need. And then we push that thing to uh, as far down as we possibly can in the expression. So the first thing you do is that selection. Um, in some cases, that's, that's very helpful. Like CSV uh, is very helpful. And generally, like column stores will have better support or they'll have better support for that kind of optimization. It's not super helpful in like a SQL database that's traditionally row oriented, but yeah. Yeah, so we support Dask Array right now. Um, yep, it's it's uh, it's very simple. It kind of just like builds up a Dask Array, um, and then you can you can uh, that since Dask supports a lot of the API that Blaze supports, you just sort of operate on the Dask Array. And you say when you say compute, it calls Dask, you know, and sort of does that. Um, but there's no support for Dask Data Frame yet. That's where we're in, we're, we're in, in the work, that's in the works. Cool, thanks, thanks everyone.